January 21st, 2017. Post-Truth America. The wars raged on while at home democracy was up against the ropes, and a new hardline regime was gearing up to take power. A regime voted in by a minority and elected by the now notorious Electoral College. The smell of America's collective discontentment was in the air. In the days and months leading up to the inauguration, I had known there was going to be a large million woman march in DC. There was a rally in Miami at our very own Bayfront Amphitheater. I knew some folks who were attending and tagged along with hopes of getting some footage and a story. Upon my arrival off the Metro Rail's inner loop at Bayfront, I could see the line for the event spreading for blocks in both directions down Biscayne Boulevard. One line went all the way past the American Airlines Arena, while the other went all the way to the Miami River four blocks away. What looked to me like two to 3,000 people were waiting to enter the rally. Being press, I walked up to the entrance and couldn't find a place to register as press, but luckily got in before the gates were closed, leaving thousands of people outside while inside seats remained. In line, I met a few of the colorful characters in the crowd and admired their creative signage. I couldn't help but notice the ethnic diversity. All shades, colors, sexual affiliations, and ages were represented. I finally entered the amphitheater, and it was packed, inundated with people. I fought past the throngs to see the sides of the walkway lined with tables for the many nonprofits and affiliated causes who had funded the event. Eventually, I made my way towards the seating and stage area, where there was a full house with many sitting in the grass adjacent to and behind the seats. The Florida sun shined bright in the afternoon sky as a cool tropical breeze blew in off the bay. The venue roared like a sports event with resounding cheers as impassioned speakers rallied the crowd. The overall ambience of the eclectic multitude of people was that of empowerment, elation, and determination. As I scanned the amphitheater, I saw so many faces of mothers, daughters, grandmothers, wives, and husbands, some with furrowed brows of concern, while others wore smiles reminiscent of those of the rallies and marches of the 60s. Nearly every demographic and age group was represented, many wearing t-shirts stating their beliefs and holding picket signs with feminist or anti-Trump slogans. The energy of the crowd was palpable. More than once, I was nearly moved to tears by that energy. I would find out the following day that there were over 300 marches in America alone where 2.9 million people stood up and made their voices heard. A powerful and decisive statement made by those whose intent it was to oppose the policy, toxic rhetoric, and unqualified cabinet of the incoming president. The many women and a few men who took the stage shared their own hardships and recounted their experiences of life in the new, more polarized America. They spoke of the need to become and remain active and told stories of oppression and perseverance. All of them stated their clear intent to organize in opposition of the forces that would take their rights away and legislate what they could do with their bodies. Many talked of the need for health care and social programs for the public good, and the fact that those things would be threatened in the months and days to come. Once the rally let out, I realized the crowd was walking from the exit directly to the street to participate in civil disobedience. I rushed to the street with my camera where a crowd of maybe 800 or more marched from Bayfront into downtown. Their chants echoed through the buildings of downtown Miami as the throngs passed the opulent stores and boutique condos of the elite, who looked on with a look of sheer disbelief and fear, while others stared bewildered at the march. As we marched, I spoke briefly with a man who was at his first demonstration. He was in his late 30s, a gay man who had a young daughter that he wished had attended with him as she would grow to be a woman and he wanted her to see the power of women uniting for a common cause. Having shot a ton of footage, I decided to call it a day. While riding the Metro Rail home, I reflected on the rally and march and the uncertain future for women, Muslims, people of color, and the LGBT community in America. If the day's events were any indication of their resolve to make change, and there were 300 other events doing the exact same thing in every major city and state in the nation. Could they pull this off? Could they actually not only demand their rights, but could they take a cue from the Occupy movement and demand that the ensconced, dubious corporate and banking entities and government leave? 
Could this movement of 2.9 million become more than just a woman's issue-based anti-Trump movement? Could it be the actual political revolution that Chris Hedges, Bernie Sanders, and others believed America desperately needed? Only time and the will of the majority of the people will tell.